Let me ask you a question. You also talked about one of the big issues and what, what, what would have been a big issue for me had that uh, storm Dolly went up a little bit more, and that's the issue of the windstorm. I'm pretty disgruntled about that because my insurance carrier threw me out and they put me in the Texas windstorm pool. Um, how do you plan to fix this? Because this is, I think, a big issue along the coast, and you represent pretty much uh, four big coastal counties. Yeah. yeah. Right. Great question. And, and I hate that that happened to you. Know that you are not alone. Uh, there are folks. Uh, it was all safe. Okay. I'm going to end up saying that we lost the opportunity. But, 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 you know, and I guess to some extent that's the difficulty you have to face with because you have four coastal counties right. and it's very difficult to kind of convince somebody who lives in El Paso that the problem I have in, in Corpus Christi is your problem in El Paso right. or in Amarillo. And I think that that, in all fairness to anybody, I, I think that's the problem is that, you know, hey, you know what? People on the coast live on the coast and you're going to have people in San Antonio and, and Del Rio and Laredo say, you know what? Move if you don't like living there. And, and I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to be sure. cruel, but That's when you have 150 are. state reps out there and maybe it affects 100, maybe 30 of them, you know, the other state reps, it's very difficult. And I don't, I'm not trying to answer yeah. the question for you, but I just know that it's very difficult. And, you know, if you can figure a solution. But, that, but this, for this specific race, it does affect it. Does. Yeah. So how, how, how are you going to deal with this one? The, Arch, Arch is exactly right. The, the line that I'll, I'll never forget from a, a colleague, uh, uh, another rep in uh, El Paso, said, hey, we're talking about a handful of rock star beach houses out on the coast. That's not what we're talking about. No, it's not, but that's what they think. Renee, you're absolutely right. Um, here in the coastal bend, in the highest windstorm rates in Texas, Texas pays the highest in the country, twice the national average. Here's, uh, here's the approach I think we have to say. Uh, the first piece is this. Um, in the same way that we vote for and hold electorally accountable your agriculture commissioner, in the same way that we vote for and hold electorally accountable the comptroller, same way we vote for and hold electorally accountable the railroad commissioners, the same gas policy. This is time to have the debate on whether we sh our insurance commissioner, who is currently a gubernatorial appointee, right. has become a revolving door between the, the big corporate boards and big insurance companies. I think the game changes if he or she has to come down to places like, uh, like the coastal bend and look those voters in the eye every two to four years. The 11 states, the 11 states that currently elect their insurance commission have on average a 43% lower windstorm rates or home insurance rates uh, than the national average. It makes it, it's like record votes. You shine the bright light of accountability and things change. But I guess that either way, you have to, you have to amend the Constitution or can you guys just pass some rules? You know, can you pass that along? It can be done with the constitutional amendment, which okay. sounds like uh, a huge shift, but as you all know, in Texas, we amend the, the Constitution 12 times uh, 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 every election. Yeah. Record votes. Record votes was a constitutional amendment. Right. Um, some other, I think there's four corners, four pieces to this. The other is this. Um, uh, what you just described, uh, Renee, companies opting to, uh, uh, to either discontinue policies or to, uh, uh, to not write any further in the, what's it called the tier one area. Those counties that touch, I know, right. are, I know you have a lot of expertise, that touch the water, essentially. That's their prerogative, and it's a free market, and, and, and they should be able to make that decision. But I think it's incumbent upon us, uh, at a time we're down to a handful of firms who are still willing to ride on the coast, to make them fully consider that decision and uh, and assess the following. You can stop riding. You can cancel, folks. You can stop riding one strong on the coast, but if you do, you're not going to ride any other coverage on the coast for a year, for two years, for five years. Um, I think that's fair. You think so? I, I think the overall majority of folks... Now you mean as in uh, no new coverage or just drop everybody they have now? No, we're, we're okay. not dropping everybody else. Okay. But, but if they're going to sign up new coverage, they shouldn't be allowed to cherry pick. Uh, but then what you're going to do to some extent is you may start excluding, eliminating potential competition in the market and maybe down to maybe two people. And then you're pretty much at the mercy of those two insurance companies if you see something like that. And I'm just trying I, to give you the flip side of that. You know, so. I thought it won. But you can make the case we're down to two insurance companies yeah. still riding the rest of the road to ride. I mean, we're still on That's true, too. And I understand that. That's we have, perfect. Well, we're true. We have two. I've been looking for it. But we have two that have windstorm, but we have, windstorm, but but we have two to do everything else. But, but I, I hate to get in there because because you mentioned I, it's I only, only along the coast, a Category 5 we could probably hit San Antonio and Austin as a, maybe a well, Category 3. Yeah, category. And again, so know, the impact, I think, would, would no, be pretty different. But again, you know, 
I think it's very difficult, but you have to do it because I think Winstrom is very difficult. You got a lot of people. Yeah, you have four coastal counties, no doubt about it. And I think that all of them want something done, but at the same time, I think that it's it's it's, it's a very difficult. And, and for that issue, you know, I, I would rather be a state rep out of Dallas. And I'll, 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 I kid you not, because that's yeah. a very touchy yeah. subject for your for your people that live in your district, want something done, but it's still very difficult to really go up and get things done because, as I said earlier, I mean, you've got 130 other state reps, we've got other things to do, and Winstrom at the top of the list. And uh, you know it's, it's just a difficult thing to, to, to have to go up to and deal with. Hopefully, realtor after realtor, you know, talk about what, you know, what ultimately is the impact. A realtor after realtor has told me this story. They're sitting down at the table, about to close on a house, somebody's first house, maybe a young person considering coming back home, about to do the final paperwork, and they introduce the windstorm piece. And it's a deal breaker. Yeah. It's yeah. a bad breaker. Yeah. Folks can't get it done. Another another component of this is. Um, We've all, uh, we've all seen it, we know folks have experienced it, maybe you've lived it. Folks who have paid faithfully on a, on a policy for a decade, right. for two decades, yeah. for three decades. Yeah. Then they make that first legitimate claim. Yeah. And what happens? They drop them, they double, they triple. Now technically, technically, again, I know you know a lot of expertise on this. Technically they can't do that. But it's hidden underneath uh, uh, non-claim policies that has the same effect. Um, you hit on something earlier, the folks out in the West. Ultimately, you know, with so many folks having to resort to the pool, the TWIA, the Texas Windstorm Insurance Association, that uh, it's grown to an extent that I think the initial policymakers never anticipated. Yeah, right. Art, back me up on these numbers. I think most analysts will tell you that as we speak, so many folks resort to the pool. Right. There's about. Okay, in the pool. Yeah, right now. yeah. There's about $6 billion. Right. Excuse me, sixty billion dollars in exposure, right. and about six billion dollars in assets. Um, now, in theory, in theory, when that big one comes, right, but, uh, but, those right. at uh, uh, but, but, ratios of folks who are playing will come in and cover that. But but, but that five storm on our ports, or uh, you know, a direct hit uh, uh, Corpus Christi Bay, uh, it's going to exceed six billion dollars in a right, hurry. Right, right. A lot of folks sleeping tonight, resting, thinking they're covered, and those resources aren't there. Now, let me ask you a question. The Texas Windstorm Pool, for those people who don't know, is this uh, something covered by the state itself specifically, or is this some other, you know, is it something private? I'm assuming it's... Well, it's a combination. It's a combination. So, yeah. in essence, taxpayers, when the hit comes, would be taking the hit, whether it's from you know, the coastal areas or Dallas or Amarillo? In th yes. In theory, in theory, that $6 billion that's on hand uh, is there to cover initial damage. But once you exceed that, then what's supposed to happen is you're supposed to be covered at a per ratio uh, contribution by the folks who are still riding on the uh, coast. The firms are still riding. Is that accurate? Yes, correct. Um, but we've never been there before. Now, what the impact will be when an Allstate has to kick in another billion dollars uh, it's hard to, to, uh, to wrap your arms around. I think the answer is this. We've got to convince our colleagues out in the western part of the state. In the same way that folks learned in the northern parts of Louisiana and Mississippi when they had their big storms, when the big one comes and the port's closed, or I've got another port up at uh, Port LeBanc and that port's closed, and all of a sudden you can't get foodstuffs in and out, or goods out to the western part of the state, or fuel at a time when folks are paying 450 a gallon already, and all of a sudden, it's not just a couple rock star homes out on the right, coast. Right, right. Then we're all in this together. And the numbers are easy. If you spread out either pre-event or post-event bond assessment of 30 bucks, 30 bucks a year, spread out over a state the size of Texas, you fill the pool. The pool becomes substantial and uh, and real. As opposed to trying to do it with those folks on the, co on the tier one, the coastal bend area, that's any uh, county that touches the water, to, to reach that same level, it's a $3,000 recommend per family. And I think we're not there. And if you live on the island, it's even, you know, the from there is just, you know, a whole different level. Yeah. You, you make a great point. You know, we always think of um, windstorm and uh, residential in terms of our homes. But if you talk to the 15 superintendents, I have 15 school districts, districts in my legislative district, and you right. sit down with them and look at their budgets, their big spike item is their windstorm. You think about uh, uh, providing windstorm for our homes. Think about what it costs to insure a, a gym, right. auditorium, right, right, right. football stadium, right. uh, 
uh, it's devastating. And of course, that has real implications for your property taxes. 